the summer of 2020 on the streets of Paris. There was an anti-racist uprising in France. The death of George Floyd had sent shockwaves around the world. For Assa Traore, it was a reminder of the police brutality closer to home. She'd been fighting for the truth surrounding the death of her brother, Adama Traore. He had died in police custody on July 19, 2016, aged 24. Ils sont morts exactement de la même façon. Today's French anti-racism movement is part of the decades-long post-colonial struggles of black and Arab people in France. Many see the authorities' prevailing supremacist attitudes rooted in France's view of the people it colonized. It's why there are growing calls for France to recognize and apologize for its violent colonization of millions of people in Africa and Asia. But for the French elite, these conversations on privilege, colonialism, Islamophobia and racism are a threat to the very core of their identity. Many blame it on the out-of-control woke leftism of American campuses and they're pushing back. Whereas in France, it's really this denial of even the need of having the conversation around race because the idea, the philosophy is that the Republic with its, you know, the, this valeur, liberté, égalité, fraternité already took care of this problem for us. We don't have to open what is called this, you know, Pandora box. France likes to see itself as colorblind. Official statistics on race and religion, illegal. At the same time, we see systemic racism when French police stop black people and Arabs 20 times more often than white people. It's this post-colonial melancholia that is gripping France, this feeling of loss that is accompanied by an inability to come to terms with the country's history and as such to accept the present that was born out of that history. Let's take a look at France's historic colonial crimes to understand the conversations on race happening today and why the French elite say no when it comes to acknowledging its racist, imperialist past. Let's start at the 17th century when the French colonized the Americas. North American colonies became known as New France. The French colonized parts of the Caribbean. This included Saint-Domingue, present-day Haiti. It grew to be the richest sugar colony because of the labor of enslaved Africans. The French also established trading settlements across the coast of India. In the middle of the 18th century, France and Britain got into colonial conflicts. Much of France's first empire was destroyed, but it didn't take long for French empire building to continue. France invaded Algeria in 1830 and then colonized much of North Africa, West Africa, Equatorial Africa, parts of Southeast Asia and islands in the Pacific. France's empire building led to huge financial gain its global settlements provided a network of trading posts and colonies that were hugely profitable for private investors. In West Africa alone, the gains from colonialism exceeded 3.2 billion francs in 1914. Where would France be without um, its, um, its colonies, its possession in the Caribbean? Where would France be without its huge possessions in, in Sub-Saharan Africa? Where would France be without its possessions in Asia, without Algeria? And that's a question that is extremely important when we go back, and I'm just talking about the, the economy, right? Intellectuals of the day justified these exploits with enlightenment ideals. The French Revolution proclaimed universalist principles, freedom and rights for all men, that was meant to lead to suffrage for adult males and the abolition of slavery in mainland France. Slavery was actually reinstated before it was banned again. But it was a different story elsewhere in the Francophone world. Jules Ferry was a French statesman and leading promoter of colonial expansion. In 1884, he said, the higher races have a right over the lower races. They have a duty to civilize the inferior races. Colonialism was spun as mission civilisatrice, the civilizing mission. One of the corners of French imperialism was the idea that France was the country of the Enlightenment. So it was really a huge part of the French brand of colonialism, colonizing to, you know, almost this divine mission to take people out of the darkness and bring them into civilization. But the civilizing mission was just the self-aggrandizing and the prestige that France got from being having the second biggest empire in the world. But even at the time, the propaganda of the civilizing mission was challenged. We see this from the Haitian Revolution of 1791 to 1804. It was a successful insurrection by self-liberated enslaved people against French colonial rule in Saint-Domingue. 
its leaders demanded France apply the principles of its revolution to its colonized subjects. It's absolutely paradoxical to call yourself the cradle of enlightenment and create and, and park specimens of your colonies behind barriers and create human zoos. By 1901, France ruled 79 million people over 4.6 million square miles on Earth. The French colonizing mission continued into the 20th century. France occupied Syria and Lebanon. What was the impact of all this French colonization? At the start of the coronavirus pandemic, two senior French doctors proposed testing COVID-19 treatments in Africa. There was international outrage. Africa cannot and will not be a testing ground for any vaccine. And the hangover from a colonial mentality has to stop. France has a long legacy of scientific experimentation on the continent. Between the 1920s and 1950s, French colonial governments organized medical campaigns against tropical diseases in Central Africa. Colonial medics forcibly injected millions with dubious medication. People were left with serious side effects, including blindness, gangrene and death. And it goes on. Culturally, the French imposed a policy of assimilation. This was the official policy of forcing French culture, language, religion, law and even mode of dressing onto colonised people. By the time of World War I, French was the most written and spoken Western language in the Middle East. There's also the trauma of war. The Algerian War for Independence, 1954 to 1962. It's hugely significant in understanding contemporary French society. The war began when the newly formed FLN movement declared its aim was to restore a sovereign Algerian state. They used guerrilla warfare at home and also diplomacy abroad, particularly at the UN. France drafted some 2 million conscripts over the course of the war. The human cost of the war remains unknown, particularly on the Algerian side. The Algerian government claims as many as 1.5 million died. The war ended 130 years of colonial French rule in Algeria. Yet for the longest time, it was called a war without a name. In my case, Algerian history was actually covered over a day, more or less. Walking around the street and seeing people that you learned about much later were actually a, a slave traders or, um, you know, colonialists or war crimes heroes and um, is, is extremely distressing. The barbarism of the civilizing French during this war isn't a part of the French collective social memory, but we can see how the issue of torture was depicted in French cinema. The 90s marked a turning point in France. Harrowing French crimes against Jewish people in Vichy France continued to emerge, where local people collaborated with the occupying Nazis. In 1995, Jacques Chirac became the first president to recognize France's role in the Holocaust. It was after this, Le Monde newspaper asked in an editorial whether it would be time for the next French head of state to clarify the responsibilities of all parties in the Algerian war. My father was born during the, the war, um, but he wasn't born in Algeria. He was born in Tunisia in a refugee camp and that yet he grew up here in Strasbourg, France. So already from a very young age, he was living all the consequences of colonialism. For us who are born here and, and raised here, it can be even more different because we don't even realize sometimes that the um, conflicts in our identities a pearl, pearl can be because there are such clash within the history that have not been resolved yet. The crimes of colonialism didn't stay in Algeria. They played out in the streets of the French capital too. On October 17, 1961, police killed peaceful Algerian protesters in Paris. Algerians say up to 300 were killed, but French officials say the number is much less, between 50 and 120. Some Algerians were beaten and thrown into the River Seine. The official amnesia surrounding this bloody event lasted for 50 years. And there are other French war crimes that are not part of the national story, including the Tiahua massacre. On the night of December 1st, 1944, West African soldiers who had fought to liberate France in World War II were killed by French forces on their return. 300 West Africans were killed, according to French and African historians. The French government only buried 70 of the men and hasn't confirmed the large number. There has never been a French apology for colonial crimes in Algeria. In 2007, Nicolas Sarkozy refused to apologize. He said Algerian leaders should focus on the future and not beat their breasts. In 2012, Francois Hollande acknowledged Algerian suffering under French rule, but he stopped short of an apology. 
In 2021, President Emmanuel Macron also ruled out an apology for colonial abuses in Algeria. What would an apology actually mean? I find it fascinating that we're not addressing what happened in the past, yet doing so would actually help us understand and, and acknowledge the issue that we have today and then therefore move forward and to, to try and solve them. And this actually hurts France because we see that if we would address this, this would just make France healthier and stronger because its children um, you know, its, 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 its citizens would then become, be more at peace and uh, heal from all of that that they're not even aware of. 2022 will mark the 60th anniversary of the end of the Algerian war. The Elysee announced that a Memories and Truth Commission will be established, but the notion of reparations has been ruled out. By the way, France forced Haiti, one of the world's poorest countries, to pay the equivalent of $21 billion in reparations for freeing itself from French colonialism and slavery. These payments continued well into the 20th century. To me, the first apology will have to be to recognize. And it will be very easy because we have archives. We're not talking about building a whole entire history. Unveiled the hidden past. Highlight the hidden past. Highlight the dead angle. And then at some point, I'm not an economist, but some type of economic reparation will have to, 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 to be weighed. Where I see reparation happening, it's that the state is forced to have this conversation around racial difference, religious difference. And we know that it's a conversation that they've been reluctant to have. Today, this conversation on race, Islamophobia versus secularism and post-colonial struggles are treated as a direct challenge to the white nationalist myth-building of the Republic. Currently, there is a war on words of who is or isn't a legitimate anti-racist. So that first camp is what I call the camp of the historic universalist or Republican anti-racist organization. And the second group is kind of a motley crew of young scholars, researchers, militants, activists, artists, oftentimes with solid roots in working class neighborhoods such as the banlieue. And many of them, like myself, being themselves children of France's colonial past, right, post-colonial productions. And the, in France, this group is absolutely vilified with adjectives such as racist, racialist, indigenous, separatist. There's heavy-handed political pushback. For example, lawmakers voted on an Islamist separatism bill in February 2021. The law expands local authorities' power to investigate mosques and oversee how they are funded. It's framed as defending French Republican values. La lutte contre le séparatisme était un impératif d'intérêt général depuis longtemps. Islamo-leftism, Islamo-gauchism seems to be the mot du jour and is being weaponized against activism on campuses. Extremely, extremely dangerous because no one knows what it is, so everyone can be it. And once you are painted as one, um, there's basically a free card against you. History and collective memory are significant in the way a national story is told. But in France, these social memories are fragmented. The stories of the children of colonialism are actively left out. France's colonialism is not just a chapter that belongs in museums and textbooks. It's a fact that exists in living memory. And through bodies like mine, France is forced to confront this weirdness, right? This wedge between what it thought of itself, you know, this idea about enlightenment and the civilizing mission and the reality of what this history is and the reality of the implication of that history in, in real life. 